Capetonians, welcome to Mother City Champions, where we try to pull back the curtain and introduce you to some of the brilliant, wonderful, inspiring people that run our city on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this morning, I have with me Mr. Jorison Lee. Now, tell me, uh, Director, Director of Metro Police Special Operations. Now, let me tell you something about what I've experienced of you, just so that the audience can hear as well. Uh, Director Lee is one of the very first people that I met when I came to the city of Cape Town. And I met him in the back of an armored vehicle uh, in the middle of a anti-gang operation that, was, that I was joining you on. That's just to see what our Metro Police uh, Gang Task Force was, was up to. And that was my very first uh, meeting you an introduction to you and i was blown away by what you and your team uh, do on the streets of cape town usually at night and i uh, just really admired you from from the word go i think that you guys do an incredible job so most of the time uh, you are to be found somewhere in a neighborhood that where there's generally some crime problems uh, maybe some gang problems and often out on, on special operations. So tell us, what does Director Special Operations mean? What do you do and what do your teams do? I wish it was as glamorous as being out on the road all day. Unfortunately, admin keeps me tied in my office most of the time. Um, 2014, the city launched the Gang and Drug Task Team. Uh -huh. And the Task Team then involved or, or incorporated the GDT teams, Gang and Drug Teams, the Tactical Response Unit. Um, the K9 unit and the equestrian unit, and as a now, now remember, people watching this might not know what those. What is what is tactical task team? What does that do? Tactical response unit, TRU, all our, our protest actions, all our um, high priority addresses that need to be done, search warrants, etc. So okay. slightly higher trained, high level of training in, in tactical awareness and maneuvers, and that's like yeah. Cape Town SWAT. Let's just let's just simplify it for people. Uh, hopefully, you're yeah, getting there. Okay, um, good. Pretty much. That's great. Right. So now, uh, canines obviously dog units, correct. and I've seen some of our dog units. They do amazing work. We've yep. got we've, we've we've got some cool dog officers. Is that what you call them, canine officers? Can canine handlers, uh, officers, yes. And and then you've got a equine unit as well, equine, so you've got, question, which yep. means you've got horses. Correct. Okay, That's excellent. Correct. All right. What else? Um, yeah. So as a collective, uh, all those units combined make up the gang and drug task team. It's a, a fluid strategy. Um, it's a disruptive policing strategy, and our, our main focus is the 10 top gang stations in, mm. in the Western Cape, or yeah. in Cape Town. Um, and then, of course, rendering assistance to our colleagues, uh, good colleagues in SAPS with AGU and, and public order policing, and rendering assistance to the other areas mm. uh, within, within our uh, service, um, like law enforcement or traffic or, or etc. Um, and the, the, the fluidness of the methodology is, is, is what works, because at any given time I need a traffic personnel to look for warrants on a, on a person of interest motor vehicle um, or I need law enforcement on, on bylaw issues at someone's rental stock address. So we use all these different methodologies to try and reach a goal um, against a certain individual or grouping. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lots of cryptic language there. We'll try and unpick it a lot. But, but essentially what the public and what I have seen myself is that if you, if you get to meet director Lee out in the field, it probably means that you're in a lot of trouble. The guys that you deal with and that your task team deal with are pretty hardened criminals, serious criminals a lot of the time. That's, uh, you seem so calm, you seem so kind of relaxed, chilled. How do you balance the people that you deal with in your job, some bad people, and this kind of calm exterior? How do you do it? It's just reliance on an absolute fantastic management team and group of individuals. Um, I think I'm on about 100 uniformed officers that are working with me. Um, and you've got to believe and trust in their capacities and their abilities and believe that they have what, what we're desiring to achieve at heart. Um, yes. So relying on them, knowing that they're going to do the best that they can, um, relying on that they subject matter experts. They know what the hell they're doing. Um, and, and just trusting in the, in the capacity to, to achieve what, what, what we're trying to achieve. And that's yes. just 
providing us, all our communities, with, with a safer area to stay in, um, removing these criminalities or criminals out of our system. And mm. So you, you've got to rely on that. I've, I have to trust the people that work with me and, and, and for me. Mm. You know, it takes me calm. Mm. I'll never forget one uh, evening that we were out together uh, and th let me just make it clear that when, when, when I'm out on patrol, I'm not getting involved at all in your operations. I'm just watching what, uh, what you guys are doing and really admiring what, uh, what you are doing. But you, you once, do you remember you pulled over this uh, red Golf, I think it was like a Golf GTI, and searched it and you found a whole lot of drugs? So how did you know to pull over that car? You pick up the little telltale signs and, and you know um, in certain areas there are certain target groups or individuals or vehicles that you that you know for a fact that, that you hunt that's something that that you can look further into yeah. yeah excellent excellent director why don't you tell us about what you really love about uh, the job what what parts of it do you really love mr may there's a there's a couple of things that you really love and you remember you know in the evenings you'll go and you'll think about some things that you achieved and what you didn't achieve and where you might have done things better and mm. um and i think one of the the most rewarding elements of the job is, is when we interact with our non-violent communities or with our communities that in fact just want to speak to us and build partnerships with us and we achieve a lot of that through with the use of our canines um, and and I questions and I think back a couple of years I was at the training academy um, doing duties there or working there and we used to have our youth camps and, and roll out our youth um, program to troubled children we call it troubled children at the schools and just that that interaction that the that the kids were having with with the service animals and with us, um, and and the the basis of that was just respect and choice. You know, mm. You've got you've got choices to make in life, and and it's about respecting yourself and respecting. But the interactions that we had with the with the service animals and the kids were having service animals was was phenomenal. You know, oh, the, the smiles cool. that the guys walked away yeah. with, and we did one school with um, physically challenged children. And yeah, the, the the joy that were in their eyes and, and in their bodies with just touching the horses and it's oh, therapeutic for them. And so those are all that's wonderful, you know. They're just the small things in life where you where someone just turns around and says, Thank you for being here, you know, that's that's all that's all that it gives you that reason to come back the next day. No, oh, that's lovely to hear. So I mean what I hear you saying is that uh, while you have to spend a lot of time doing the kind of negative side of policing, uh, busting criminals What's actually really heartwarming and, and, and what you love is the positive side of building relationships with communities, taking your, you call them service animals, uh, you know, dogs and, and so on to communities and just showing uh, Cape Town communities that Metro Police is there to serve and to, and to look after them. That's great. Yeah, for sure. I've spent some time with your, with your dog units and, and they, they're just remarkable. Yeah. Um, Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, I just met, I don't know if you've met this new uh, dog officer. Do I call the dog an officer as well? Is the, is the dog they, they're officers in their own okay, right. right. Yes, so it's so also an officer, yes. I, they yeah. kind of deserve the respect, right? They work yeah. hard, yeah? Yeah. So this, this new uh, dog that we've just brought on board that actually can smell stolen copper. Isn't that amazing? I didn't know that stolen copper had any smell. And, and yet there he is, busting copper thieves. Yeah, um, we've we've got we've got different um, types of, of animals or mm. types of uh, dogs that that can sniff various elements. So I've got the narcotic dogs, which mm. obviously pick up all your different drugs. We've yeah. got our explosive um, dogs that picks up firearms, bombs, whatever it may be. Um, we've got man trailing dogs for our missing persons. If mm. if if there's a scent that can be made on a clothing item, you know, hopefully we can go find the child that's missing or the person Excellent. that's missing. Um, and then we've got, yeah, we've got the copper dog and um, can't, it can't detect stolen copper, but it detects copper. Any so, copper, yeah, any <laughs> yeah. copper, yeah. Um, fantastic little dog. That is actually a, a multi-breed dog and a lot of our dogs you'll see are, are real dogs. Their mother was a dog, father was a dog, pavement <laughs> specials, um, but, they, but they're brilliant. And, and yeah. I think that's the, that's the time that the handlers are spending with them yes um that bonding is critical if, if your handler is not bonding properly with your dog you can forget about any productivity mm. 
um, and the absolute love that those handlers have for their dogs and I've seen the that. treats, yeah. That's really and cool. And that's what makes it so successful. And, and thanks to you and, and the budget that you're providing, we're going to be expanding that We soon. are here, so that's great. I, I, I believe I'm, so. I'm very, very pleased. We, we, we really tried hard to find the budget to expand our dog unit because it's so successful. I mean, I've seen it, again, just from personal experience, the few times that I've been out on patrol with you, how difficult it is to find drugs when you're a human searching and with yeah. the amount of places that you can hide it. You bring a dog in and two minutes, it's, it's sorted. Picks it up immediately. It picks it up immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw that on, on, and that's when I actually made the decision and said, we've just got to find the money to expand this, um, this dog unit. Tell me, when I was out with you, I saw how closely you worked with, with Saps on that, on that particular night. Tell us about your relationship with Saps in, in the city. Absolute fantastic. Um, nobody could ever say that there's, there's a fight between the members on the ground. Um, regardless of what happens in various levels of politics or mm. um, on the ground itself, absolute fantastic working relation with the anti-gang unit, um, obviously in Cape Town, as well as public order policing in Cape Town. Um, even at area level, VISPOL, VISPOL commanders give us shots um, requiring assistance at various interventions. Um, but the the plus to it is, is isn't it's always it's not one way it's it's two ways. Mm. So when I need assistance, when I need staff for whatever reason, I pick up the phone. They're there. So the working relations was fantastic um, on the ground. Um, we can't do it without each other. We're not in competition with him. Mm. Um, no one's in competition. Um, but it's it's really good, Mr. Man, and, and I think that's what we need. The, the public deserve that. You know, mm. the public deserve that we that we work hand in and out on the ground, and that's exactly what we do. Let's swing back to the personal, if I may. Just, how did you get into the service? What, what, what? It, if anything, it, it does it run in the blood? That's that's very often the case that I've yeah. found. There, there's lots of police officers in the family. Uh, how did you get into the service? Absolutely none in my family. No, really. <laughs> um, finished high school back in those days. We still had to do the national um, service, military service. Finished that. Um, went straight into traffic services. Ninety four. Still at the old good that was before uh, the Bergs came about and. I'm giving, I'm giving my age away, <laughs> um, and ended up to, to where we are now, you know, all the different changes in orgs and, and to why become a cop, I suppose, just service, uh, I think mm. just assisting and along the way we, we did a lot of other little added extras like ambulance service, volunteers and, oh, wow. you know, so we did all of, when you say we, myself and, and a few of my colleagues, and that was always something that we kept on doing. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I suppose that, that's the reward. Yeah. Great. Do you have any message for Capetonians who, uh, who are watching this program? A couple, but I think I'd just go with the, the primary one would be with, without the information without their support without the partnership um, we can't do anything not mm. us not saps not the military not anybody um, we need our communities we need the information mm. we need their trust and and um, together <laughs> together i suppose we can resolve a lot of our issues yeah. well directly Lee, you are our very first mother city champion you are the one that we chose to launch this, uh, this video program for Captonians to see. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you. Uh, my absolute respect and admiration for the work that you do. You are, uh, your heart shines through, your heart for the job, your heart for the city. And I think, uh, not speaking as mayor, but speaking as a resident of Cape Town and on behalf of all the residents watching this, thank you so much for what you do for our city every day. And, uh, and I think all of us can sleep a bit easier at night knowing that you are out there keeping us all safer. So thank you, Mother City Champion. Thank you, Mr. May.